Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today our focus is going to be on the company 3M, ticker MMM. The company has had some legal challenges over the past few years, but they are finalizing the settlement of two major ones for an approximate range of 16 to 18 billion dollars. In this video, we'll take a quick minute to look at their financials, then perform a stock valuation, and at the end of the video, we'll review my portfolio performance. So let's jump right into it. Starting off at the top with revenue over the last 10 years, not much growth and really being relatively flat throughout the years and up just 2.7% since 2014. Next is net income and earnings per share being negative in 2023, which mostly came from their Q2 results, which was due to the initial contamination lawsuit settlement agreement. So moving forward, this should remain positive. Then two data points I always like looking at. First, dividends, which I like to see increasing over time, which 3M clearly does, and growing more than 75% over the decade. Then share count, which I like seeing on the decline. And since 2014, 3M repurchased more than 15% of their outstanding shares. Next, free cash flow, just like revenue, not much growth here, and slightly down from 2014 and the highest year being back in 2020. Then lastly, net profit margin, which I like seeing at least 10% or higher in 3M, is typically in that mid-teen range, which is very good sign. But uh, 2023, it is negative, and that's because of that net income that we discussed a moment ago. So let's jump down now and perform a stock valuation. Here's the valuation setup, and we will look at making a modification in a moment. And if you get any useful information, I ask you to consider liking and subscribing to the channel. To the channel. But for the intrinsic value, I have $102.71, and with a 80% margin of safety, brings that down to $82.17. And this is based on a short-term growth rate of 0% over the next eight years with a 10% discount rate, and I am using a 2% long-term growth rate. Now up here in the top right, two data points I like looking at when performing the valuation, and that's the net income CAGR and the earnings per share CAGR. And we can see here, both of these are negative, and that's because the net income was negative for 2023, as we discussed a few minutes ago when we looked at their financials. So this is why I'm using that 0% short-term growth rate. And also when we looked at their revenue and free cash flow over the last 10 years, that has been relatively flat. Uh, revenue was up just over 2%, maybe 2.7%, and free cash flow was actually slightly lower. So that's why I'm using a 0% short-term growth rate. And also it's being conservative, which, which I like doing with my valuations. And the reason why I'm using the 80% margin of safety, uh, typically I use 90 if you see my videos, but I'm using that 80% 80 because of these low lawsuits. Yes, they are settling the lawsuits, but in case there's any uh, residual issues that come up in the future that may still impact them. So I still want to be conservative with that 80%. And I am using a conservative long-term growth rate of 2%, which I normally use 3%. So my intrinsic value at $102.71 is pretty conservative. And the current stock price is trading around $92, $93. So there are some opportunities there, though the uh, margin of safety isn't quite where I'd like it to be but there is some opportunity but let's just say you think my 80 percent margin of safety is a little too aggressive because of all these other uh conservative data points i used so let's just increase that margin of safety to 90 percent and see how that impacts the uh valuation so with that 90% margin of safety, we can see it brings it down to $92.44. So about in the range where it's currently trading. Now let's make one other modification. We're going to lower that margin of safety back to 80%, but we'll increase that long-term growth rate to 3% and see how that impacts the uh, price. So with that 3% long-term growth rate, intrinsic value jumps up to $110.68. And with that 80% margin of safety, brings it down to $88.54. So slightly below where it's currently trading. But let's look at a few other data points. So because of the negative net income, we can't determine the current P-E ratio. But historically, it has traded from the low teen to low 20 range. And then long-term debt to free cash flow, I like seeing under three. Clearly, they're below that, 2.5, so good sign there. And then as we discussed with their dividends, they are uh, they have increased 75% over the last 10 years. And it's currently trading with a pretty uh, reasonable dividend yield, actually a very nice dividend yield, 6.5%. So if you're a dividend investor, uh, here's a good opportunity. Uh, share count, as we discussed, it has been on the decline over the last 10 years and down 16.3%, so a great sign here. And then net profit margin, as I said, I like to see over 10%. And these values here, the 12.32 uh, over the last 10 years and the uh, 4.5% 
uh, 4.08 for the last three years. This does take into account the 2023 results, which is, which is negative. But if we remove that, this would be in that uh, mid-teen range, probably somewhere around 15, give or take a percentage. One other data point I like looking at too is return on invested capital. And back in the uh, previous years, you can see 10 years ago was at 15, five years ago, 8.6. But most recently it has been on that decline, especially over the one year. Um, as we discussed during the financials, they had to uh, settle some lawsuits. So that's to impact it, but hopefully moving forward, they can start increasing this again. But let's move on and we'll look at my portfolio performance next. Here's the portfolio's performance for Tuesday, April 2nd. So pretty red day across the board and some of the big down ones was Tesla down almost 5%. And then BTCW, that's one of the uh, Bitcoin ETFs. So that's down just more than 5%. And then also my home builders, so Toll Brothers, TOL down 3% and Pulte Group, PHM down a little more than 3.5%. Only good positive signs was Lockheed Martin LMT slightly up uh, 0.1% and then Lyondale Bissell LYB, which is a chemical company, up a little more than 2%. So at least there was some positive signs today. But let's move on and we'll look at the uh, total performance overall. Overall performance, we'll start out with Tesla down a little more than 9% for me. I've only owned this for about two months or so, and they have had some issues during that time. So hopefully in the next couple of quarters, they can turn things around. And then that Bitcoin ETF, Bitcoin has struggled over the past 24 hours. And you see I'm down about 2% in one, in one account and about minus 0.6% in another. But long term, I am pretty optimistic with uh, Bitcoin. Now, looking at those home builders we discussed earlier, see Toll Brothers in my uh, one account they have owned for about two years. It's up 166%. And then Pulte Group, again, I've owned that in one of my accounts for about two years, and that's up 96%. And then Lockheed Martin, uh, up 37%. So I have owned this for maybe about two years or so. And I should have sold this probably about a year ago when the stock price hit 500, but I was being greedy thinking it would go up higher, but it dropped and now it's currently trading about 450. And then Lyondell Bissell, I've owned this one probably about three years or so. And I have been consider, considering selling out, but they do pay a pretty good dividend yield, about 4.5%, 5% range. So that's kind of what's holding me in. And I do think that though the stock price has been relatively flat over the past year, year and a half, I do think there is some potential for the market to realize it's undervalued, but still in the back of my mind thinking that I should potentially sell out and move the uh, investments into something else. But I hope you enjoyed this video, got some useful information. If so, consider subscribing, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.